The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning. We got some PPI data to get into. We also have some initial weekly jobless claims to get into. Right now, the market's bouncing a bit from the overnight lows. We got the S&Ps up by 13 points, 4,072. We're climbing right to the highs we had approaching midnight Eastern Time last night. When you look at where we are on a weekly basis, you come into the future Sunday evening at 4238. You trade down 210 points almost in the S&P. P's. You're talking about a 5% pullback, folks, from where we were just on Sunday evening. Talk about a quick pullback, but since then, we're up a solid 1% just from where we were at about 4.30 or 5 a.m. Eastern time. NASDAQ 100, you trade from 13,800, you trade down 900 points in the NASDAQ 100, 12,914. We've bounced about 200. The Dow's positive by 22 points, 33,537. 537. Uh, these look like small bounces, but just the volatility we've seen. We, we just traded down 1,800 points in the Dow, and since about 5, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. this morning, we've bounced about 326 points. That's a good time to jump over the VIX. Talk about some volatility. How about hitting almost a 29 on the VIX at the lows that we were getting at about 5 a.m. this morning? We're still sitting at 25. The market pricing in some volatility in a big way. Uh, rightfully so with seeing the types of moves. You get a 5% pullback in the S&P, you better be charging some money for volatility premium in S&P futures. Okay, what else we got going on? Commodities, we got crude pulling back 64.23 this morning, gold backing off about $4 to 18.19. Notes and bonds, a little bit of higher price, lower yield, but we're still sitting basically where we were at about 9 a.m. yesterday morning. You're sitting at 132.01 in the 10 year. You're talking about a yield of about 1.69%, I believe. We'll pull that up in a moment. And let's jump over to the fundamental news of the morning. So we get initial jobless claims falling by more than forecast last week. Still pretty remarkable numbers on a weekly benefit, uh, weekly basis, excuse me. You're talking about a half million jobs. Initially, new weekly jobless claims as this economy is still struggling. I mean, we only added 266,000 jobs for the month of April, right? Well, just last week, you had almost a half million people filing an initial jobless claim. It's going to be some tough numbers if we keep rocking around at a half million initial jobless claims at a time when we're only adding 266,000 jobs in the month of April. And that's not going to be the expectation, folks. The, the expectation for May, June, and July jobs numbers are not going to be 266,000. They're going to be some big numbers while we deal with this transition to opening back up. Initial claims, regular state programs declined by 34,000 to 373,000 in the week ended May 8th. The median estimate was 490,000. The prior week's figure was revised upward to 570,000. So that was your number at 830, but a bigger number may be hitting the markets here because that was pretty close, right? It's declining, continuing to decline, missed by about 30,000. Uh, inflationary data, PPI, producer price index. The number I like to look to on this one, because things, the, the base effect, we're all learning new terms, right? Base effect is the in vogue term, but it matters. When you're doing year over year statistics, they almost are irrelevant right now, folks. They don't do a good job of representing future trends. As in, yes, producer prices jumped 6.2% in April from a year ago, but April last year was in the depths of the beginning of the COVID pandemic when everything was shut down. The number that really I keep paying attention to is that they rose 6% just last month. Excuse me. Now, getting into some of the numbers as well. So 6.2% year over year, making the largest increase since the agency started tracking the data in 2010. You get into the core number in here. Let's see, I think we're at, yeah, so month over month, they were at 0.6%. They were looking for 0.3% for the month. So a bigger number there. And year over year, the number was only looking for 3.8%. Analysts are just way off continuously. And I don't know how that's happening, but just everything is bigger than they think. Yet the market somehow is shaking it off to some degree that it's transitory. I think people still 
kind of believe that this is somewhat transitory. Um, definitely what the Fed is probably going to come out and say, at least that they need more data than just uh, this one to two month surge that we're seeing, especially on base effect levels where we're comparing it to the depths of COVID. Uh, core PPI, so that's going to exclude volatile food, energy, and trade services rose 0.7% in April. Now, here's where they get into the numbers that just are really remarkable in ter terms of how certain things can skew what's going on here. You had yesterday for CPI data, you had the used car market adding almost one-third of I think it was the 4.2% number, whatever it was, one third of the effect of the CPI data was the rise in used car prices alone. Well, you're seeing a similar effect of a variety of things in the PPI. A sharp jump in steel mill products contributed to the leap in PPI in April, the Labor Talk Department said. Prices for beef, veal, pork, residential natural gas, plastic resins and materials and dairy products also moved higher. Prices for steel jumped 18.4% in April from a month ago. That's not a year over year. That is from a month ago. Steel up 18.4% and food up 2.1%. Food up 2.1% in a month. Remarkable. Um, so those numbers skewing things potentially, that's one argument could be made, but nonetheless, producer prices rising. You have the PPI, that's talking about prices that um, are being paid to producers and yet CPI for consumers, both of them showing inflationary data. But the question is, is that going to persist? Is this going to be something that we come out of? I mean, you know, you're seeing, like I mentioned, similar deals where you just have a few areas with escalating prices to a dramatic degree, putting some pretty remarkable headline numbers out there, but we'll see if they persist. Okay, let's jump around to the market. I'm going to start things off with the S&P. Um, checking out where we are on this S&P. So I'm going to draw a quick trend line here because I had it on the chart yesterday. I'm going to pull up the drawings, drawing tool, just a nice simple line. When you go across the top side of this, pretty simple to draw the trend line there. Higher highs, lower, um, lower lows across the board, just touching almost high to high to high on that. You put this thing on the lower trend line and look where we are, folks. Okay. It's an interesting area, right? You're talking about one, and that one's a close one as well. Two, three lows. We're matching right up to that low area as well right now. Something to keep your eye on. We break below this trend. Um, that's a dicey area for the markets for sure. We're trading at 4,071, and you can see. I mean, maybe it's an art, not a science, folks. We'll activate that drawing. Very possible that there's a little bit lower as we match up with the real low back from March 5th in the S&Ps. Let's jump around to some of the stocks with action, some of the stories out there that I'm taking a look at. Um, we'll start things off. You know what? Let's start off with a quick tease of Disney. because We got Disney earnings coming up today. Talk about a pullback. Disney's up about 50 cents right now coming into the opening bell. Got a bid ask of 178.33. We're trading yesterday at the close of 177.85. This stock is just back down from 203.02. We're now below the highs that we had, which had some serious support here on Disney, you're talking about a high back in Mar uh, December of about 183.40 were the highs. We bounced on a, that area a few different occasions. Coming into earnings below that number, when you pull up the Analyze tab, you're talking about a $7 move potentially on their earnings. Uh, see what happens. We get Disney earnings after the bell. We had a couple others to go over still wrapping up earnings season. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to Kevin Hanks from Fast Market. Don't miss their program every trading day at 11 o'clock. We've got a lot to talk about today. Stay tuned. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps positive by 12 right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 99. The Dow up by 19 points. We have some PPI data this morning. Of course, we're going to get retail sales tomorrow. We got earnings tonight. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Folks, every trading day, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Great program talking about option season, talking about what's happening in the market. They walk you through hypothetical trades, trade management, rolling over, whatever you need to do. They break it all down. Great time to check out the program when we got a lot going on in the market. And we got a VIX that's jumping around potentially around like 25 right now, 2535. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Uh, you know, I think... If, if you sum up yesterday's trading and sum up today's trading, you know, the 10-year yield went out, closed yesterday on the high of the day and never really backed off. Bonds were under pressure all day and yields were higher all day, and that didn't give stocks any oxygen to bounce. Well, today's a little different story. Yields are slightly lower here, about 168, and, uh, you know, stocks, though are drifting back towards uh, no i mean no stocks are strong here i'm looking at the nasdaq it's up almost you know seven eighths of a percent here to start the day so uh stock indices are green to start the day on i think a calm overall market you've got crude all lower by two and three quarter percent on good news about the pipeline you know servicing the east and southeast and uh i think the the theme at least to start the day tommy is Calm. Yeah, quite a little bit of a turnaround. You know, the s and is up by 14 points, but things were getting a little dicey at about 5 in the morning, Kevin. That's when uh, we had the s and P's down to 4,029, so you're solid 44 points off the lows. At that point, it looked like we might get even a VIX at 30. I got a 28.93 print on the Thinkorswim platform, uh, rightfully so, as the slide was continuing, so a little bit of a bounce. The market seems to maybe like that PPI data, even though it's showing some big numbers. Uh, steel was up like 18% month over month. Food up about 2%. And then tomorrow, we got retail sales. Kevin, March, just a gangbuster number of like 9.8% probably not what we're going to get but the market looking for a positive number uh what do you what are you looking for maybe potentially as we look for retail sales coming out tomorrow at 8 30. yeah the consensus for retail sales tomorrow morning in the month over month number is about one percent x vehicles about 0.8 so we'll look at that but i you know it it'll be interesting to see that that number looks the eyeball test on that looks a little low because the numbers we're getting out of 
you know, some of the Red Book data, although that's year over year data. So, you know, we'll see how this number comes in. But right now we're looking for retail sales. The consensus up about 1%, X vehicles up about 08 So uh, that should be another healthy number for the U.S. economy. So we'll see. You know, Tommy, uh, PPI data that came out today, there's four looks that we get at inflation during a month. It's the wages data in non-farm payrolls. It's CPI. It's the PCE data in personal income and outlays. And then it's, you know, a distant fourth is the PPI data. So uh, in terms, this would ne- never be a big market moving event, P- PPI, in terms of looking at inflation. But it's not insignificant. But in terms of looking at inflation, I think it's the fourth most important look, Tommy. We appreciate that heads up, man. And yeah, the retail sales, this is my own personal bias, but I would agree. 1% seems like a pretty low bar with everything going on right now. I know you're going to have a recoil um, in March was a gangbuster number. And just on the other side of that, it seems like every article I read, Kevin, with every single, and I'm exaggerating, right? But uh, the analysts are just way off. There's a beats across the board in terms of whether it's you know sales, whether it's earnings, whether it's inflationary data. So we get a print tomorrow for retail sales. But before we get that number it's still earnings season we got some companies coming up today it might be a good one what are you guys going to be talking about on the program the high profile earnings event of the week is disney which comes out with earnings after the bell today we'll do an extensive look at D- disney today and what they're doing a couple other names that we'll be looking at airbnb uh is Besides that, but Disney will be the focus of today's show. Like Folio, we'll do a presentation on it. We'll look at it and trade it today on Fast Market. Folks, at 11 o'clock, I am going to be glued to my desk watching Fast Market with Kevin Hanks and Alex Coffey and the team at TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin, I love Disney. I trade it all the time. We have some Disney in my newsletter. I always appreciate the analysis, man. We've had quite a little pullback. Uh, the streaming wars, Disney, talk about accelerating. Quite a dichotomy, some of these companies, man, in terms of Disney. Just Max Payne's situation in the beginning of the pandemic, no movie theaters, their park shut down, Disneyland in California, not even open until like last month, I think. On the flip side of that, right, the streaming deal. I think they're pushing possibly 350 million subscribers across their lineup of streaming platforms by 2024. Uh, we look forward to the discussion, Kevin. I'm jumping over to the Analyze tab before we let you go. $7.16 move right now. Not too crazy in my mind. I'll do that first impression um, for $178 stock with the volatility it's had and uh, $7.16 move as we come into their earnings after the bell tonight. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the education. Of course, we look forward to the show as always. I'll be watching at 11 o'clock and I'm sure we'll all be tuning in. Thanks so much, man. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for you having too, me Kevin. My pleasure, man. Take care. Folks, check it out every trading day, 11 o'clock. I'll be watching at 11. I encourage you to do the same. The way they walk through hypothetical trades, you can learn so much. I've had people ask me, you know, I want to get into options. These are very smart people. They're just not in the financial world. They see it. They say, hey, I would love to be able to, you know, know what I'm doing in the option market a little bit more. And I literally say to them, are you watching this program, Fast Market? Have you been through the TD Ameritrade Network? They have a whole lineup of courses that you can take for complete free within it. I mean, folks, you go over to the Education tab and the Thinkorswim platform, all right? I mean, this is what we're talking about. I didn't even plan this, but they have events, they have options, they have courses that are right there, trading options, seven hour course, all right? Completely free, you can walk through, shows you everything about it, different types of strategies, et cetera. And then of course, check out the program, download the demo account, follow along every trading day. Now, Disney, 178.72, we'll start it off, why not? Quite a little pullback, as I mentioned, kind of right under that 183.40 area. Interesting, coming into their earnings, being below this level, but they'll be out with their numbers after the bell tonight. Let's jump around to some of the other streaming companies before we do Netflix. Talk about a little bit of a pullback on Netflix shares. Now, what makes, <clears throat> excuse me, Disney especially interesting is that Netflix just disappointed in a big way. If you recall, they missed their earnings numbers in a mammoth number. Um, I think they had, were supposed to get maybe 6 million plus subscribers. They ended up coming in at 3 million plus. It was a big miss. And the worry was that they had front loaded all those subscribers. There was going to be a little bit of a slowdown period as they had front loaded and front accelerated maybe some of that growth. You had Netflix coming into their earnings on the high side. 
and we've now traded all the way back to the lower end of that consolidation. And you talk about basically a hundred dollar range from about 480 up to the highs of between about 570 and 580 on Netflix shares. And let's jump around to some of the other Fang stocks. Talk about some volatility, but we have a rise right now with the Nasdaq 100 up 120 points. We got four minutes to go until the opening bell. Amazon shares 3151. Quite a pullback for Amazon this week, but we're up a bit this morning. You got Microsoft shares right now. A little bit of a bid from 239 to 241. We got to check out Apple shares, Apple 124.27, and we'll talk about Tesla. We're going to talk about Tesla, all right, and uh, we'll talk about Bitcoin when we get back as well, folks. Tesla back above 600. They are not accepting Bitcoin anymore because Elon Musk was just informed that computers mine Bitcoin and it uses energy, and he's worried about the energy consumption and the impact on the environment. I guess he didn't know that when he took $1.5 billion of the Tesla balance sheet and put it into Bitcoin. I'm exaggerating. We'll talk about when we get back. Bitcoin, though, on the heels of that news, down $5,000 almost at 49,000. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. The opening bell. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 16 points, catching a little bit of a bit on the opening bell. That's four tenths percent in the green. But you're talking about a solid 45 points off the lows we had last night in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 up 125 points right now. The Dow up 32 points right now, jumping back to Bitcoin. So last night, haven't pulled it up, but I'm guessing that tweet is sent out at about 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time as Bitcoin falls out of bed. Tesla tweets out and Elon tweets out, I should say, I believe. Uh, Tesla, either way, not accepting Bitcoin anymore. Bitcoin trades from 55,000 to 46,395. We're back right at about 50,000 right now. Now you look at Doge, Doge down as well. You put this thing on a one day, yeah, down 5% maybe or at 41.56. Folks, I've been saying it all along, do not touch Dogecoin. Now the interesting thing here is you go back to April 16th, it was trading at 42 cents. We're trading at 41 right now. You're under where you were April 16th. That's 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 a staggering one, you know, in terms of the the rides to zero probably on this uh, crypto, folks. Regardless of what happens with Bitcoin, um, the remarkable thing is, you know, Tesla front loads. They buy a bunch of Bitcoin. They tell the market. Elon knows that Bitcoin's going to go up on that news. They sell their position before they get out. He tells the market they sell. It's really close to influencing influencing market action um you know they're asking in the den is that legal right well it depends what is going on behind it and the intent and it tends of course you know it depends on what you can prove and very difficult when he is quote unquote just asking questions i mean folks just yesterday elon was asking if they should accept dogecoin pumping that up and then today he reveals that they're not going to be accepting bitcoin anymore obviously news that's going to shatter that industry overnight it could recoil i imagine bitcoin will be around in some way but just a lot of hogwash going on in that market but tesla uh right now let's see how tesla's trading look at this market catching a bid tesla's uh up 2.3 percent you have all the stocks trading up right now s p is catching a little bit of a bid we're up 25 points at 4084 we get the nasdaq up 163 the dow up 113 points let's jump to disney so they're trading ahead of their earnings events tonight 178.74 not sure what was going on here at some of the lows one of the other stocks i was jumping to let me jump salesforce uh catching a bid up about 1.6 percent right now uber shares i've went over it's been quite a pullback you're up 2.6 percent today some of these stocks just trade more volatile than others right you had uber down like 4.6 percent yesterday you're up 2.5 percent today within three minutes of the open at 45 uber's had quite a pullback i'm going to back this up even further you're sitting at a 382 of basically the entire move from the COVID lows of $13 to the highs we got in Uber of February 8th. That's the week of 6405 in the span of four weeks. You traded from 60 bucks to 45 right now. You're coming right into the higher bar that we had from November 2nd, also correlating to the 382 of about 45 bucks right now for Uber shares. All right, taking a look at that S&P. That's a weekly. Let's put it back on the daily and see the action that we've gotten. Talked about that trend line, quite a little bounce right from there, 4,084. We're sitting at 4,238 coming into the week. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump back and take a look. Let's see. Uh, how about Domino's Pizza and Bill Ackman? Interesting. Now, this is yesterday's action, but Domino's Pizza, 6% stake. Excuse me, DPZ, I believe is a symbol. Uh Yes, so this thing has quite a run up, folks, and this is always the case, right? You know, the stake is revealed. Well, you just traded from 319 to 426. It's a billion dollar position. Um, I'm imagining some of it took place as this accelerated higher, and you would be getting in to Domino's approximately 25% off the lows in terms of it's already risen. Now, yeah, you're back to the highs we had basically from October, which is not bad. You jump over to the Analyze tab, you're talking about you go to the fundamentals, Domino's Pizza, right now, a $16 billion company. Um, it's what you like to see if you're an investor, and Domino's is a great company just from a consumer standpoint. I mean, look at this run. This is a three-year weekly. We just climbed above the highs that we had back in October, but just as I mentioned, it's really hard to add up here. You know, yeah, Ackman's got a position, but he got a position at much better prices than 426.85 to invest a billion dollars in this equity. Doesn't mean you couldn't start with a quarter of a position or something if you were looking for it. Um, but yeah, I would be waiting as uh, 
a pullback could be ripe, especially when you have a market that's kind of dicey action to the negative side. Let's jump over to the VIX as we see this market spiking higher, 24.39. I was thinking this morning when the VIX, I was up at 4.30 this morning, so I saw the lows. So, boy, today's going to be maybe another dicey day. Uh, we'll pull up the VIX on a 15-minute basis at 4.45 this morning, 28.93. I said, man, we're going to get a 30 VIX. What came to mind, if we remember some of those huge VIX, VIX wagers, right? Maybe they were just protection. Maybe they were a hedge. Uh, had to do with the VIX being above 25. Well, we hit 29 almost this morning. Just like that, we're back under. But a far cry from 16.68 doesn't even seem real. We were just at a 16.68 print in the VIX on Friday, and we were almost hitting 30 overnight. This market is bleeding up. S&P is up about 30, the Dow up 182 now. Look at that pop on the Dow, 33,693, the Russell up 27, all the markets spiking higher. Tech stocks a little bit muted. Let's jump to notes and bonds. You get the 10-year up about four ticks, clawing back some of the action that we had yesterday to the downside. You're talking about a yield of 1.683% right now. Now, over in Europe, Right now, you have the DAX down about three tenths percent, FTSE down 1.2 percent. Over in Asia, Nikkei down 2.4 percent, Shanghai down a full percent as well. Okay, let's talk semiconductors for a second. Pretty remarkable when you talk about the numbers that they're putting into chips. But guess what? We have a shortage for chips. They need to be used for computing power, and computing power runs the world right now, folks. Korea unveils 450 billion dollar push for global chip making crown you're talking about almost half a trillion dollars this is going to be basically over the next 10 years samsung and sk hynix i believe it is leading investment to rev up capacity and south korea unveiled that ambitious plan to build the world's biggest chip making base over the next decade joining china and the u.s in a global race to dominate the key technology so that's 510 trillion won of investment in the years up to 2030 under a national blueprint devised by the president moon jae-in uh, administration at south korea i believe they'll be among 153 companies fueling the decade-long push of staggering numbers samsung boosting its spending by 30 percent to 151 billion while hynix committing 97 billion to expansion at existing facilities in addition to its $106 billion plan of four new plants. Just staggering. Now, that made me think of the amount of money coming in. Taiwan Semiconductor just announced they're spending $100 billion, I believe it's just three years. Yes, in the next three years to meet soaring demand. So it's going to catch up probably eventually. You're seeing the players in that industry spending the type of money that you have to, I guess, when you talk about basically not billions. It's approaching trillions of dollars because or hundreds of billions at least. Uh, to catch up with the chip shortages, but they're going to be spending it. And look at this, folks. S&P is 4,091, up 32 points. NASDAQ 100, up 155. Let's jump to some of the FANG stocks real quick. Amazon shares, 3,187. Microsoft shares right now up 1.7% at 243. Let's see how Apple's trading. There we go. That's, that's the reason why you're getting some movement across the board. Apple up 2.4%. We're up more than $4 off the lows we had last night. Uh, Apple's got a lot of shares to add $4 per share. But stay tuned. We'll be right back after the break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Shame on me. Apologize for that, folks. I'll jump back to it. Alibaba, we had a high of 319.32. We're off more than $100 to 213.63. Their numbers, they're down 3% today. They have a first operating loss as a public company following a $2.8 billion antitrust fine in China. They swung to a net loss in March, quarter of 5.47 billion won, that is. The market expected a net profit of 6.95 billion won. Loss of operations, 7.66 billion won. Lots of wands in there. Nonetheless, Alibaba down about 3%. You're back down to right where we were in December in Alibaba. What else we got going on in terms of earnings that are out this morning? So we have Sonos, I believe I wanted to pull out. Yes, yeah, Sonos. They earned 12 cents a share for the latest quarter. The market was looking for a loss of 22 cents. Speakers and other audio products raised the full year guidance, saying it believes it can meet demand despite global ship shortage, and we're up higher in a big way. Uh, S O N O, yes, S O N O is their symbol, and we're giving back some of it though. We're up six percent. You were as high as above 35 right now. You see the pullback we've had from 47.22 on this equity, but Sonos up about 6.4 percent today. All right, what else we got going on? Canada Goose. They're higher. Let's see if they hold on to those highs before we talk about it. Goose is their symbol. Look at these pullbacks we're getting. What is going on there? That's got to be frustrating. You get some decent numbers. You open and the thing falls out of bed down 6%. You had Canada Goose surging, as they say. Uh, unexpected quarterly profit. They earned a cent to share. Market was looking for 12 cent loss. Revenue beat forecast. Amid a surge in online sales and strong demand from China, I would expect there's more to going on in that stock if you're down 6% on the open. The conference call also beginning, though. Maybe that's what uh, whatever they're talking about, not good on that conference call. You always got to wait for the conference call, folks. Uh, falling out of bed right now, down 5.7%. Bumble, how about this one? Interesting as well. So Bumble, the dating site, so they surprise analysts with a first quarter profit compared to an expectation of a loss. Also reported better than expected revenue. They issue an upbeat, upbeat current quarter revenue guidance. More people returning to dating. 
despite the upbeat numbers, they're lower. More going on as we talk about. Really interesting. The beats across the board, this thing just falls out of bed as well, down 11% to 4204. I think we just went public on this, right? How far back do you have to go? Yeah, talk about a slide. Ouch. From 84.80, you're at 42.19. This is a four-hour bar. Let's put this thing just back on a daily. And there you go. 84.80, we're down to 42.22. Uh, tough area right now. Let's see what we're valued at when you talk about this equity bumble. You're talking about a valuation of just under $5 billion. Still quite a valuation when you talk about an online dating site. And I think they have a couple that are under this brand. It might even be Tinder as well. Let's look at it. Um, company operates two apps, Bumble and Badoo. Not familiar, never heard of Badoo before, have heard of Bumble. Um, Bumble app is built with women at the center. Its server um, serves across countries, including the US, UK, Australia, Canada, flexible subscription plans, and the most common lengths are seven day, 30 day, 90 day. Interesting stuff, $5 billion company, but guess what? 10% today, they're taking off on Bumble shares down. But this market, market not down. s and is up 34 points right now. Let's put it on the 15 minute. And just kind of hanging out where we were on the acceleration on the open. We spiked to a high on the open, about 4,094, sitting right at that level. You're above any area that we were at overnight in the S&Ps. And let's jump to that note and bond market. Always got to keep your eye on it. I was watching Fast Market yesterday, and uh, this note market, you trade from 132.18. Now, when I talk to Kevin Hanks, let's just even zoom it in further. I talk to him every day, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 9.15. So our conversation takes place just prior to the opening bell. So that conversation was taking place with the 10 year at about this is the 915 bar so this is where the 10 year was during our conversation so we're chatting we open at a price of 132.03 actually right where we're sitting at right now but by the time they actually got on the air for their program you're trading 131.29 you continued to slide about six ticks below where you were the market proceeded to pull back as well slides across the board but that note market just sitting right there with a yield of about 1.68 percent across the board all right what else we got going on for earnings tonight so we talked about we get disney after the bell tonight you also got airbnb let's jump to airbnb a b n b is their symbol they're trading lower on the open down two percent we'll put this thing on a daily they go public back in december we're almost right back to to that level man some of these stocks uh just remarkable the pullback in terms of percentage wise that we've seen from some of the lofty highs that we've had airbnb at 220 back in february let alone trading at a price point of 215 back on march 16th we're trading at 137.41 okay you're talking about a 12 dollar move essentially almost a nine percent move on this equity coming into their earnings tonight um, as they come out what else we have we got coinbase after the market as well now coinbase biggest exchange for crypto 18 dollar move priced in now coinbase is down 2.2 percent today bitcoin's pulling back big time that's going to hurt them um tesla not accepting bitcoin anymore not what coinbase wanted to see last night i'm sure they're out with their numbers for the first time as a public company that's your daily action we make a low of 250 on may 6th we've bounced a bit 277 right now now here's the thing this thing has a lot of future growth priced in, folks, when you're talking about a $55 billion company. Um, but there's nothing hotter than the crypto segment uh, sector, excuse me, right now. But they're out with their numbers after the bell as well. And we also get DoorDash. Dash is out with their symbols. DoorDash up 2.3% in anticipation of their numbers. There's your chart on DoorDash, though. Dicey action. They go public in December. DoorDash trading Wait, what did I just do? DoorDash, is that what we're looking at? Is that the same? Yeah, Coinbase, that what we're looking at? Yeah, DoorDash down to 115 from 256. That we're talking about, did I just have that up and think that that was Airbnb? I think I did, is that Airbnb? No, they pull back as well, look at that. So Airbnb goes from 220 to 137. And DoorDash goes from 256 to 115. I mean, even if you stop like and don't include that flash high you're talking about a high of about 220 to 115 doordash right now you're talking about a ten dollar and 93 cent move they're 115 dollar company so almost a nine percent move priced in as well and you're talking about 37.6 billion dollar company now doordash is valued at 37.6 billion you pull up a company like uber now uber's up 2.3 percent today they've really pulled back harsh they may be impacted by doordash's earnings tonight 84 billion dollar company and when then we'll pull up lyft lyft right now up about half a percent lyft 15 billion dollar company interesting to see those valuations compared to each other in context 
Right now, S&P is trading at 4,088. Let's jump to the VIX, see how we're trading so far today. You get the VIX right now, 2436, as volatility continuing to get sucked out of this market. A uh, little bit of fear pulled out of the market. We got a bounce for the first time, and maybe PPI data, not as harsh as maybe they were thinking about. Retail sales will be coming tomorrow um, as well. All right, folks, see where we're trading at. You get the Dow. 277 points in the green, quite an acceleration. You're talking about almost 600 points, folks. Look at that, the Dow just continuing. These are five minute bars. We come right out of the gate and we're trading at 33,800, folks. You're up 600 points from where we were yesterday. No, not yesterday, five in the morning on the Dow. Stay tuned, we come back to finish up the show. Be right back, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets melting up. S&P is right at 4,100 right now, up 41 points. You get the Dow up 340 points, continuing to melt, melt up right now. I'm over on the heat map section. We're going to pull up the S&P 500 and just big-time numbers across the board. You have Microsoft. Now, you can see the impact in terms of this is the S&P 500 I have up here, right? Green basically across the board right now. The only stocks that are in the red are basically energy with crude right now down one a dollar thirty eight. You have Exxon down slightly, but Apple up one point five percent. Microsoft up one point four percent. 
Google shares up three tenths percent, three tenths percent. Facebook shares up about six tenths percent. Amazon shares up about half a percent. Amazon, not really a driving story for that stock, but just interesting in terms of how they continue to grow. Amazon hiring 75,000 workers in the latest job spree. They just continue to hire. These stories early on the pandemic hiring. I mean, they are just a juggernaut. 75,000 warehouse and delivery workers at its facilities in the U.S. and Canada, Amazon said today. New hires show proof of their COVID vaccine, and they get an extra $100. You're seeing businesses incentivize some of their workers, maybe not requiring them, but that the best way to kind of try and get workers vaccinated without creating the problem of forcing things and that becoming a problem for whatever reason. Um, but nonetheless, markets higher, checking out the S&Ps, we're above 4,100. It's been a slow melt up, we're not even low, folks. I mean, we're now 70 points off the lows we had at five in the morning. We'll see if it holds though. We're only 25 minutes into the trading day. As I mentioned, we get Disney earnings after the bell. Let's see how they're trading coming into that number. Disney, 179.31, pretty muted right now, up about eight tenths percent with some of the move that we had. And how about Boeing? Boeing trading higher up 3.2% today, and we'll finish it up with Boeing, I believe. If I can pull it up fast enough, where was my Boeing? There you go. They received FAA approval for its proposed fix to the electrical systems of some of those 737 MAX. They had issued service bulletins detailing the fix and said it should only take a day or two. That was in the press recently. Boeing up about 3.1% on that. An interesting area on Boeing. You know, you're looking to get some action on Boeing. Might be an area that you could dabble. We're at 227, you're right back below those highs that we had in December, and also right back to the lofty highs we had in June. Remarkable, you had Boeing up to 234 in June with everything else going on. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Thanks for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Fast Market at 11. Larry Pezzamento at noon. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien all this afternoon. Live programming all my